Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. Today's topic in conservative dentistry is teeth bleaching or teeth whitening process. How the teeth is from a darker shade to lighter shade get changed by using chemicals. So that is what we are going to uh, learn in today's class. So teeth bleaching, first of all let's uh, directly jump to classification. We have process which is done on vital tooth and non-vital tooth. So it can be done professionally from the dental office and from house itself okay by the person so in dental office that is in office bleaching we have power bleach thermocatalytic bleach and photothermocatalytic bleach from the person himself can do at home that is night guard bleaching which comes under vital bleaching whereas non vital bleaching we have in office that is professionally done at dental clinic that is thermocatalytic bleaching and walking bleach so what are the materials commonly used for bleaching we have three materials one is hydrogen peroxide then carbamide peroxide and sodium perborate so ultimately it is hydrogen peroxide it is done the process of bleaching okay so first we need to learn the mechanism of bleaching so it is a oxidation reduction reaction which is known as redox reaction okay so tooth and bleaching agent which is undergoing a redox reaction so tooth is a reducing agent and bleach is a oxidizing agent so how bleach will become oxidizing agent because the hydrogen peroxide or carbamide peroxide or sodium perborate after the chemical reaction it releases hydrogen peroxide so carbamide peroxide also it releases hydrogen peroxide so the first product is urea and hydrogen peroxide urea will be converted to ammonia and car carbon dioxide carbon dioxide will be changed to carbonic acid so this hydrogen peroxide that is what actually is becoming the oxidizing agent okay so oxidizing agent is nothing but which oxidizes the other product that is a oxidizes the tooth so what it is exactly oxidizing is chromogenic pigments so chromogenic pigment is what uh, gives the tooth a darker shade okay so it has unpaired electrons that is free radicals so you can see hydrogen peroxide after chemical reaction or after reaction with uh, saliva it becomes free radicals that is hydroxyl and parahydroxyl free radicals so this dotted one is free radicals and also super oxide anions so all having unpaired electrons okay so these unpaired electrons will be donated to the reducing agent that is a tooth okay so this oxidizing agent with free radicals that is with unpaired electron will be donated to the reducing agent and this reducing agent is oxidized and become whitened tooth because it has a darker shade chromogenic pigments so, so this chromogenic pigments will be double bonded okay it has double bond so it will be converted to single bond okay so double bond will be always a darker shade it will become single bond it will be a lighter shade that is a reaction which is happening okay that is the oxidation of tooth or the tooth surface so on the tooth surface we have this chromogenic pigments okay so how this pigments is coming we are going to see that is we have uh, the stains intrinsic stains and extrinsic stains so this is a mechanism which is happening so let it be sodium perborate or carbamide peroxide the hydrogen peroxide which is converting to the free radicals so this free radicals with free unpaired electrons will be giving the electron to reducing agent that is tooth and it becomes oxidase that is the chromogenic pigment with the double bond changing to single bond that is chemical reaction so this double bond will be oxidized to become single bond so the color also will be changed to a lighter shade okay so that is the mechanism of uh, bleaching now we are going to see about the uh, indications contraindications and various types of pigments and all the bleaching techniques so the first product is hydrogen peroxide it is uh, used as a whitening agent usually in the range of 5 to 35 percentage uh, it has low molecular weight which can penetrate dentine 
it is clear colorless and odorless liquid which is very unstable and it is kept away from heat so care should be taken while handling uh, because it has ischemic effect on skin and mucous membrane so it is commonly used in walking bleaching technique whereas the sodium perborate which is a stable white powder it has got three types that is sodium perborate monohydrate uh, trihydrate and tetrahydrate so when mixed into a paste uh, with superoxol this paste decomposes into sodium metaborate water and oxygen so it is used in walking bleach so whereas a carbamide peroxide we already discussed uh, it is urea hydrogen peroxide it is uh, carbamide peroxide it is differentiate it is dissociated into urea and hydrogen peroxide this is forming hydroxyl ions which is creating free radicals with electrons splitting the double bond into single bond okay so that is the three products commonly used for bleaching hydrogen peroxide carbamide peroxide and sodium perborate so there can be basically two types of stain which we are trying to remove or make it to lighter shade using bleaching that is intrinsic and extrinsic stain intrinsic stains which is present uh, or which is present within or which is internal uh, to the tooth extrinsic stains which is present on the outer surface of teeth stain internalization is nothing but extrinsic stain which is going inside through the defect in the enamel structure so there are uh, many causes for intrinsic stain uh, it can be metabolic inherited iatrogenic traumatic idiopathic and aging causes whereas extrinsic uh, as we all know it is related to diet bacterial stains gingival hemorrhage chloroxidine stain tobacco stains so this internalization is due to uh, dental caries gingival recession tooth wearing so metabolic causes so we can have metabolic causes so this itself can be a short note that is the types of stains so metabolic causes uh, it can be alkaptonuria congenital erythropoietic porphyria and congenital hyperbilirubinemia and inherited uh, discoloration uh, the most common amelogenesis imperfecta dentinogenesis imperfecta a i d i then dentin dysplasia so vitamin uh, d rickets then epidermolysis bullosa ehlers danlos syndrome so all can cause intrinsic stains which is in the inherited cause so trauma related discoloration is basically due to the pulp necrosis and again uh, another reason is uh, dentin hypercalcification dentin hyper calcification then pulpal necrosis so uh, then iatrogenic discoloration uh, like due to the amalgam filling pins and post placement and various obturating materials uh, composite material intracanal medicaments pulp tissue remnants so all can give intrinsic stains and also the medic medication that is tetracycline staining uh, which is due to the uh usage of tetracycline uh, during the pregnancy time so uh, again another one is fluorosis you know consumption of water with fluoride more than 1 ppm gives uh, various ranges of uh, fluorotic enamel it ranges from uh, minimal white flecks to severe uh, brown discoloration so that is fluorosis again it could be due to the normal aging process so enamel becomes thinner 
dentin becomes thicker and more yellow and grayish yellow so that is about intrinsic staining whereas the extrinsic one means it can be uh due to metallic and non metallic causes so metallic uh, basically associated with occupational exposure whereas uh, non metallic is associated with tobacco tea stains coffee stains stain induced by chlorhexidine stain from uh, use of antibiotics and also from chromogenic bacteria so that is extrinsic stain which is actually easy to remove compared to the intrinsic one now let's see the indications of uh, bleaching so it is indicated when there is mild discoloration on surface evenly distributed discoloration without bands or white spots teeth discolored as their innate colors or aging hemorrhagic discoloration discoloration of anterior teeth after rct or medication discoloration but it is contraindicated in sensitive teeth that is if a case of attrition abrasion erosion or abfraction teeth with cracks hypoplastic or severely undermined enamel then if there is any extensive restoration the discoloration in the gray blue gray or black range which is very difficult to uh, get to a light to shade after bleaching and discoloration by metallic salts uh, particularly silver amalgam if it, the pulp chamber is enlarged so in such cases also it is contraindicated and also if patient uh, complaints uh, is a factor in pregnant and uh, nursing uh, uh, ladies also we need to um, take precaution because there is a reported history of peroxide allergy so that is about uh, various types of stains uh, now let's see the uh, various types of bleaching so for bleaching we have two techniques vital and non vital so in vital can be done at office that is uh, one is power bleaching so power bleaching then thermocatalytic bleaching catalytic bleaching and photo thermocatalytic photo thermo catalytic second one is done at home that is night guard bleaching so question might come as night guard bleaching or walking bleaching so both are done at home one is vital and another one is non vital and again uh, non vital also uh, we can done the thermocatalytic bleaching so thermocatalytic nothing but the reaction starts using the heat source that is why thermocatalytic the heat becomes a catalyst so we'll start with the night guard bleaching that is done under vital tooth bleaching done at home so this is the most commonly used technique because it is very easy to perform and less expensive the only thing is so we need to create a custom tray based on the patient's uh, teeth uh, then only we can uh, give the material for the patient to perform the uh, bleaching at home so it commonly uses 10 percentage carbamide peroxide so it is indicated uh, in superficial enamel discoloration or mild yellow discoloration or brown fluorosis discoloration or age related discoloration so contraindicated uh, in severe enamel loss hypersensitivity bruxism caries uh, any defective coronal restoration or any type of allergy so the steps the main step is to fabricate the tray for the patient okay so first we need to take a impression then make the stone model trim the model place the stock uh, stock out resin and cure it apply the separating media then choose the tray sheet material 
so nature of material used for fabrication of plating trays uh, flexible plastic need to be very flexible so that patient can easily wear it so the most common material is ethyl vinyl acetate okay so ethyl vinyl acetate so then uh, cast the plastic in vacuum tray forming machine trim and polish the tray checking the tray for correct fit retention and overextension then demonstrate the amount of bleaching material to be placed because we need to teach the patient how much uh, material to be taken and how to apply it because the person is going to do this at home there is no uh, dentist is there to monitor the patient so we need to demonstrate it so the main thing is we need to keep a pre-operative photographs because the patient uh, might argue after that the patient has not improved so we need to keep a pre-operative photograph uh, so before doing this uh, we need to instruct that patient has to brush his teeth uh, because this surface debris minimize the effective contact of bleaching agent then uh, place the enough bleaching agent into the tray to cover the facial surface of the teeth so this is how we teach the patient okay then uh, uh, tray should be worn for a period of four hours okay four hours for every session so if there is any problem that is sensitivity uh, then patient uh, need to reduce the time period and then patient can repeat the bleaching session for a second time in same day okay so this is for one day so he need to remove the tray from the second molar region in a peeling action okay so after that rinse off the bleaching agent from the surface of the teeth tray should be gently brushed to remove the, any of the bleaching residue so the number of days required to achieve the desired results is chiefly dependent on the original extent of tooth discoloration if the person's uh, discoloration is very mild uh, he might get a good prognosis in a very recent time so if it is a very uh, darker shades it takes a longer period so it can the results can be seen as early as 2 to 14 days or may take 6 to 12 months okay it can take up to 6 to 12 months or can be as early as 2 to 14 days okay so that is a process of night guard that is done at home so we need to teach the patient how to done how to apply it how to remove it and what uh, procedures before uh, applying the tray and how long he should keep it and what after to be done that is how to clean it and on uh, what occasion uh, you need to reduce the timing all things we should teach the patient that is a night guard bleaching so next is a in office bleaching that is a bleaching of vital teeth at dental clinic so this is a basic one is thermocatalytic bleaching so the equipment required are power bleaching material then there should be a tissue protector then there should be a activating source basically thermo activator then protecting cloth and eyewear there should be a mechanical timer so most commonly uh, we are going to use a light source uh, it could be conventional bleaching light tungsten halogen curing light or xenon plasma light or argon and carbon dioxide lasers or diode laser light so these lights can initiate the process so we are going to do the procedure using a thermocatalyst or mainly a light source so it is uh, commonly indicated in mild fluorosis and tetracycline stains then also uh, the superficial stain so in order to match the existing color of the crown that is lighter than the natural teeth so it is contraindicated in uh, extensive caries, hypersensitivity, uh, root exposure, severe discoloration and extensive restoration. So the procedure, okay. First evaluate the tooth color with a shade guide. We can use a 3D sh shade guide and we need to evaluate the shade of the tooth. 
then protect the gingival tissues with uh, vaseline or oro base and isolate the teeth with a rubber dam place a protective sunglass over the patient's and operator's eye because we are going to use the light source which is very harmful for the eye then clean the enamel surface with pumis and water then we need to uh, apply it uh, the apply uh, the bleaching agent so that is 32 35 percentage of hydrogen peroxide okay so this is the agent so night guard we used 10 percentage carbon monoxide peroxide here we are using 30 to 35 percentage hydrogen peroxide so it is applied uh, as a liquid or gel on the labial surface of the teeth using cotton pellet then we are going to apply heat with a heating device the temperature should be maintained between uh, 120 to 140 degree 120 to 140 degree Fahrenheit or it is 50 to 60 degree Celsius so the treatment time should not exceed 30 minutes so it should be less than 30 minutes so because if it is go uh, going uh, beyond 30 minutes uh, the result will not be satisfactory so after that remove the heat source and allow teeth to cool down for at least five minutes pumice is used uh, to on the teeth to remove the residual exposed gel from enamel surface then irrigate thoroughly dry the teeth and gently polish them then uh, we need to apply the neutral sodium fluoride gel for three to five minutes so any bonded restriction on the bleaching surface and tea coffee etc and uh, all this should be avoided for two weeks okay so that was the thermocatalytic where we use a uh, light source okay light source so we can also have non thermolytic uh, bleaching so in this technique uh, the heat source is not used so the commonly used uh, bleaching material is superoxol ether uh, sorry superoxol so it consists of hydrogen peroxide and ether that is h2o2 and ether so superoxol is five part of h2o2 and one part of ether then we can have another solution that is Macken solution Macken solution is nothing but five parts of H2O2 then five parts of HCl then one part of ether okay so that is uh, without using a light source okay so that is uh, either superoxol or Meckin solution. Superoxol is nothing but H2O2 and ether and Fi is to one combination. Then Meckin solution is along with uh, this we have five parts of HCl. So next we have the bleaching of non-vital tooth. Okay, so non-vital tooth. The first one is walking bleaching. It involves uh, use of chemical agents within the coronal portion of an endodontically treated tooth to remove the tooth discoloration so indicated uh, discoloration of pulp chamber dentine discoloration discoloration which is not amenable to extra coronal bleaching so this is basically extra coronal bleaching this is like uh, intra coronal bleaching we're trying from outside it outside the enamel surface so it is contraindicated in superficial enamel discoloration, defective enamel formation or severe dentine loss, a presence of caries or discolored composites. Now the steps. So first take a radiograph to assess the quality of obturation. Then evaluate the quality and shade of the restoration if present. If restoration is defective, then replace it. Then evaluate tooth color with shade guide 
isolate the tooth with rubber dam, re-establish the access cavity, remove the coronal gutta percha, expose the cavity and refine the cavity. Then seal the orifice of the root canal with at least 1 mm intracoronal barrier over the gutta percha to prevent percolation of the bleaching agent into the apical area. Okay, so we need to this is the tooth we have endodontically placed a gutta percha here. So this is the access cavity. So seal the orifice of the root canal with at least one mm intracoronal barrier keeping an intracoronal so there should be a barrier here so that uh, the bleaching agent we are placing here will not percolate into this periapical area so GIC uh, MTA or any other material can be used as a barrier material of which this MTA is very good So this level of barrier material should be 1 mm incisal to the CEJ. Okay, so here it is a CEJ. Okay, cement and ablation 1 mm incisal to the CEJ. So it is important to confine the bleaching agents to the crown of the tooth above the level of bone. So we have bone here. So it should be above the bone. Then we are going to mix sodium perborate with distilled water. Okay, so sodium perborate we are going to use for the walking bleaching it will be mixed with distilled water in case of severe stains we can also use 3 percentage hydrogen peroxide then carry this uh, this thick paste into the pulp chamber so we are going to place it here we are going to place it here Make sure that entire facial surface of the pulp chamber is covered with the paste. Okay. Then place a small cotton pellet slightly moistened with H2O2 over the bleaching paste. Then seal the access cavity to a thickness of 3 mm using an adhesive material. So the maximum bleaching effect is attained about 24 hours after the treatment. 24 hours. So patient should return in 3 to 7 days for evaluation of results. If too dark shade, we need to go for additional bleaching. And if the shade is too light, the tooth should be uh, permanently restored. So that is the procedure of walking bleaching. Where we use sodium perborate and 3% H2O2 which is done on the endodontically treated tooth keeping a barrier here using MTA which is a 1 mm to the CEJ and alveolar bone keeping this barrier not to percolate the bleaching agent into apical area so covering the bleaching agent on the facial side and sealing it and asking the patient to return in 3 to 7 days and do the restoration if it is uh, not attained the result we need to repeat it whereas the thermocatalytic bleaching that is non-vital in office bleaching so after preparation of the tooth as previously described so the same procedure we need to repeat a loose mat of cotton is placed on the labial surface and another is placed in the pulp chamber of the tooth to be bleached so the cotton mats are saturated with 30 percentage of hydrogen peroxide then the solution is activated by exposing to the light and heat from a power, powerful light. So here we are using powerful light source to activate the solution. So the tooth is subjected to usually 5 to 6 minutes exposure and replenishes the bleaching solution in frequent intervals. So on completion of the bleaching, uh, a pellet of cotton is moistened with Hydrogen peroxide or sodium perborate is sealed in the pulp chamber until the following appointment.
the main complications of this intracoronal bleaching is external root resorption chemical burn or inhibition of uh, resin polymerization so that is all about uh, the non vital bleaching or vital bleaching so question is mostly asked about the night guard or walking bleaching or it is commonly asked as a vital bleaching or non vital bleaching so it's very commonly asked question and again regarding the hydrogen peroxide carbamate peroxide and sodium perborate so hope you understood the concept of bleaching so we were discussing the bleaching concept in the first part of this video then we discussed about various types of stains then about the the bleaching techniques that is vital bleaching and non vital bleaching techniques so i'll come up with a new topic in conservative industry thank you